Well, hello there, all my little buddies. Today we have a video that maybe should have taken longer than it should have, or even shorter than it should have. I'm not really a good judge of time on this. Anyways, this video is going to take about 3 hours, 46-ish minutes of actual gameplay. Okay, maybe not 3 hours, but then a bunch of time to actually go back and review the film, then a bunch of time to do the math, so like 2 hours-ish. And he got uploaded, so about three hours, and render it and all that. So, yeah, somewhere around three hours. It's going to take me three hours from start to finish to finish this video completely. Upload it, maybe make a thumbnail, you never know. But this is going to hopefully be a popular video because it has a lot of effort put into it. And that's, that's the important thing. So, it's just as the title says, we are going to try and answer the question, Hotspot, is it worth it? Well, let me put it this way. The quickest answer to that question is yes for four-fifths of the game. I would say every five levels or so, spend one time doing pods, and then every four levels in a row do hotspot. That would be the quickest and most likely most efficient way to level up and just be good at the game. Now the reason I'm saying this is, well let me just say that hotspot pretty much outshined pods in every single way except for drops. And by drops I mean things that will get you better like money or the weapon packs, or turrets, or any of that. And really, it's just the strong boxes that are the main thing. But still, the other stuff is nice too, I guess. Plus, I didn't even count this, but bosses killed, you gotta keep that in mind. There's like, I believe, two bosses every single time I did a pods, and then there's still no bosses in this. So you gotta keep that in mind as well. I didn't really count those. But then again, they might count on the kill feed, I don't know, the kill counter at the end of the thing, maybe. Who knows? Anyways, so what I did here is I just played through Hotspot as many times as I could to about the point of, well, okay, every single time a Hotspot goes up, it is exactly 20 minutes long, so I went from exactly start to finish, as close as I could to start to finish, with getting the maximum AP. And since this is a science video, I'm going to try and be a scientist and limit my factors. Now, of course, there's the, the variables, the unknown variables, the impossible factors to get exactly correct, because the game doesn't play itself. You have to play the game, unlike Blue Star Defense or something like that. So, obviously, there's going to be a couple key differences. Though I still feel like I did my best possible job I could have. I used the same weapon for pods. I didn't use any pickups. I didn't use any grenades. I didn't use any drops. I didn't change weapons. I didn't do any of that stuff. I just straight up sped run as much as I could. And then of course I just placed down turrets and stuff to get the XP for that. Throwing all the grenades to get the XP. But I didn't actually use them to my advantage. Or at least I didn't try to. So keep that in mind when you're watching this. I limited the factors as much as I could. These are the closest results as I could get. Except for one major thing. So this got lucky. The hotspot got lucky. And pretty much it had about a minute and a half somewhere like two minutes maybe left when I did my final run so that was pretty much exactly over as I finished my last run which is gonna be I believe this one whereas for pods I tried to keep it around the same amount of time except it would be exactly halfway through my last run on pods to where the hotspot ran out so I decided to not count that last game of pods. Keep in mind that does skewer the results quite a bit, but not anything dramatic. Like the results are still gonna be obviously one-sided to one way, which I've already kind of stated before. But guys, which one could win? We gotta make this epic. We gotta have some epic soundtrack in the background. And oh my gosh, I'm going, I'm going hardcore. I'm doing my best I can to kill all these zombies. And oh, it's so cl close, but we do. We beat it, we beat this one. And next, we are going to go to another hotspot, and then we are going to go to pods. So another thing, 
the loading time. This might skewer the results a little bit because you are spending more loading time in hotspot than you are in pods, meaning you're playing more in pods, whereas you're waiting more in hotspot. Now, of course, loading times are the same for both, but since you play more games of hotspot, you spend more time outside of the game for hotspot. Keep that in mind as well. So that kind of goes in a whole thing of the time. I would say that helps balance it out, actually, to a pretty reasonable amount because in the end, it's only a minute and a half difference of time. So it's not that bad at all, actually. But I mean, it still would change the results just a little bit. But I just chose the best method I could. This is the closest results you will probably get ever because I'm probably going to be the only one to ever make a video like this. All right, all right. So I did not get any AP for this video, but keep in mind, if you want to go for those long achievements, Hotspot is not the way to go because you get no AP besides some for like killing zombies and whatnot. Maybe playing games is that an achievement? I don't think it is. But you'll pretty much get killing zombies and that's it. If you're going for that achievement, yeah, I'd say do it, but I wouldn't do that if I were you. If I were an AP Hunter, I would not do Hotspot. I would just straight up play the game, play pods, it offers the most things, it'll get you all the AP, I believe, well pretty much all the AP, you can't do all the map masters, but that's another thing, if you play pods, you're getting the map masters, whereas there are no map masters or anything like that for the contract missions, so it's pretty much a waste, and then you're still not getting much money, or much ammo, or really anything like that. So it's really kind of just a waste to play hotspot, if you think about it like that, but if you got just free time, unlimited resources basically, and you just feel like leveling up, this would be the quickest way would be playing Hotspot. But here we are, we're playing Pods, obviously we're getting strong boxes now, we're getting all that AP, we can sell those strong boxes, get more AP. I already have the AP for getting all the upgrades and whatnot, so I don't have to do that. But if I didn't, I would probably do, do that, even if I was recording this video, but I'm not. So there we go. So the first time, I decided to do my best speedrun possible, it didn't really work out. This time, I just try and collect as many drops as I can and just play the game, but still doing it as fast as I can. So keep that in mind as well, because that might also somewhat skewer the results, because on the first run through, I only got 5 drops, whereas on one of the other run throughs, I got 15. And it's, it mostly varied between 9 and 15 sticking around 10-ish average, but that first game I only got 5, so just keep that in mind for when you're doing the averages and when you're doing the total, and I did do some time spinning on the map at the end of this video, so just stick around for that, and we'll be right after the final game of Pods, which we're on, I believe, the second out of fourth, so just keep that in mind. Also, remember that I didn't want to use the zombie antidote, or anything like that to my advantage, so I try to limit that as well. And when it comes to bosses, if you get a wicker or you get the fire guy with the necrosis, that might also skewer it. That's why I tried using the proposition only on those specific parts. And obviously the flamethrower doesn't pop the boss egg, so I'd use a proposition there as well. And I believe I used proposition another time. So a little bit to destroy that first door and that little side market area there to get the drop off in there. But I didn't kill those bloaters either, because, you know, that's kind of pointless while I do that <laughs> at this point in the game at least. It's kind of obvious. So yeah, here I go, just killing everything. There was a little mistake, and that might also play into it, a little bit extra game time there without really getting much, doing much, but I did get a draw, and I did kill a few zombies from it. So, all in all, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but if you really want to consider it like that, go ahead. But of course, the unlimited factor kind of makes it impossible. And keep in mind that I do have to use some adaptiveness here for the Devastator, but I try and limit it as much as I can, just to kill it as quick as I can, just speed run this, and do as good as I can. So we're nearing the end, guys. We're nearing the part with the math so that you can really see and make your own judgment on whether you want to do hotspot or pods or however you want to play this game, to what degree. I didn't do multiplayer. Multiplayer might have different results completely, but then again, it might not. You never know. I wouldn't know I didn't do that for this video, unfortunately. But then again, I figured that I needed this to be as simple as I can, and this was not really simple at all. So... 
We are nearing the last game. This is going to be the last game, and hopefully you enjoyed this gameplay. There's a little tiny mistake right there, but everyone has to make those. Sometimes you can't just know which way to go. So we're really nearing the end here. Going to fight, face this final boss. Can we beat him, guys? There's always the factor of if you make a mistake and you die, then you don't get as much stuff. You don't get the strong boxes. You don't get any of that. You get a lot less XP and whatnot. Whereas in Hotspot, you are really less likely to die, and you don't get any strong boxes or anything like that anyways. So just keep that in mind that it's more risky to play this, whereas for Hotspot, it's less risky. So here we go, killing the final Necrosis. Can we do it? Can we kill the fire guy? This is the final boss of the final game of the final everything. So here we go. We did it. Now 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we did it. We are... Alright guys, so here we are onto the math. As you can see here, SAS4, this is a science to the gameplay. So, let's just get it down into it, break this up into major depth, so that you guys can understand and make for your own decision which one you would rather play, Hotspot or Pods, which is more effective, which one do you like better. So, of course, like I said, the total was 43 minutes, the first game, well the first playthrough on Hotspot, Total time was 22 minutes, 21 seconds. The total time for pods was 20 minutes, 50 seconds. So like I said, I tried to balance them out as close as you could, but that was as close together as I could. And then, you know, the difference was 1 minute, 31 seconds. Somewhat big, but if you really want to take that into account, go ahead. Pods would be slightly better if you did. And I kind of counted out the last game because it took way too long. So this is the result I came up with. So you got 7 games total with Hotspot within the 22 minutes on that and we got four games on pods with 20 minutes within that so that means the total was 11 games so really it was just one game per 235 seconds that's what four ish minutes each yeah around four ish minutes i believe four yeah like okay four minutes let's just say one game every four minutes how about that okay so the time it took for Hotspot, believe it or not, it was 2 minutes 21 seconds for every single run through because the time is automatically adjusted so you can't go above or under it. You just kill as many zombies as you can within 2 minutes and 21 seconds. Whereas for pods, I was speed running it, sort of. So the quickest and longest time I got was 3 minutes 40, I mean, excuse me, 3 minutes 34 seconds and between four minutes and six seconds so that was the quickest and longest game i had on pods with the total for all games being 48 minutes or no excuse me uh silly me 43 minutes or 11 seconds all right so the kills for hotspot as you can see there was actually quite a big majority for hotspot kills compared to pods kills and you get more xp for the hotspot kills so keep that in mind as well so within the 22 minutes of the hotspot kills compared to the 20 minutes of the pods kills there were okay well there were <laughs> let's see okay well for the hotspot there was 1.85 kills per second for pods there was 1.15 kills per second and comparing hotspot to pods you will on average get 1.72 times more kills on hotspot than you will on pods and then of course for the total time of 43 minutes and 11 seconds of all the gameplay there were 3932 kills total so moving on, we have the XP, which is really my main point of making this video, my main point of everything in this video. I don't really care about anything else. This is the main thing specifically for me. So within the 22 minutes and 21 seconds of the hotspot, I earned 95,784 XP. Whereas in pods, the 20 minutes and 50 seconds... I earned 33,170. So that's about three times the XP for Hotspot than it is for Pods total. Now, the total XP I got was 128,000, almost 129,000. Okay, now for this, it was 71 XP per second on Hotspot compared to 26.53 seconds, or 26.53 XP 
per second on pods. So again, almost a three times ratio there. That's just breaking it down even farther. And finally, we have what I call the better factor, which is all the drops, like I mentioned, all the monies, all the turrets, all that goodness. Basically, get all your masteries up, get all your AP, get everything that will just overall make you better, the better factor. So for Hotspot, a total of zero. Now for this, pods, it was between five and 15. Like I said, the first run was five. Then the most getting run was 15. I believe it was the last one, maybe second to last. But the total was 49 for pods and then zero for hotspots. So 49 total for four games. That's a little bit over 10. It's about 13, I believe. Maybe 12 to 13 pickups total. Average, I mean. So 12 to 13 pickups average per game of pods compared to zero on hotspot. I didn't really add that here. I probably should have. All right. Well, now that you have understood all of that, it is up to you to decide which one do you think is better. Tell me in the comments below which one do you think is the most effective to play, which one do you think is best overall in general. Tell me in the comments below, like I just said, hotspot or pods. Just comment one of those. And like I said, my own opinion is to play Hotspot four out of five levels, and then on the fifth level, play Pod so that you can get all your stuff, get all your money, get all your XP, get all your AP. Unless you are an AP hunter, then you might want to get all the AP in the game. Just do Pods straight up, no Hotspot, maybe a little bit of Hotspot every now and then. But mostly Pods, and then of course all the other map masters, once you master Pods. And then yeah, that's pretty much it. So guys, it is up to you to make your own decision. That is all I'm gonna have for right now. I'm probably gonna have another zombies video out tonight, but a Nazi zombies video. And the next five to nine ish videos are gonna be Nazi zombies video, especially considering tomorrow, July 9th, gonna be a major zombies day. Gotta keep that in mind. So, as always, guys, I would like you all to pretty please have a day.